tan 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 Let's go. We're Let's live. Let's do it. Welcome back to Oppy News, everyone. It is episode hey, three everyone. of Oppy News. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, Christian O'Prea. How you doing, Christian? Hey, 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 hey. All good. All good. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into some Oppy News. We have some interesting stuff. What's the date today? It is the 18th of May. <clears throat> it is Friday. See, You're ready for 17th. the weekend. No, oh, Christian, come on. You know this is coming out tomorrow. 18th, of course. Are my for apologies. fuck's sake, you've ruined always, the illusion. I always fuck it up. You've ruined the illusion of this being recorded and, and send that, sent out in the moment. It is the 18th, Friday the 18th of May. Friday it is the 18th. The weekend is here. You're ready for your weekly fix of Oppie News. So we've got a few important headlines for you this week. And not really that important. They're just kind of cool, kind of interesting. So let's jump into – well, right, let's give a quick preview. We're going to be talking about a new customer communication tool from Shopify that's going to change the way you interact with your customers. We're going to be talking about a new acquisition from Alibaba and some seriously big impl- – yeah, what's the word? Implications, Implications that that could have. Um, we're going to be talking about Coinbase's first investment into a, a different company, which is going to be kind of interesting because it's going to uh, open some more uh, stuff in the world of cryptocurrencies. And we're going to be talking about driverless cars. That's interesting. Ooh. May not be related to e-commerce and that kind of stuff, but it's seriously interesting. And we're going to be talking about a little bit uh, of what's going on with Walmart at the moment and um, and their first quarter report. So... That's what's coming up in today's show. Let's jump straight in. Shopify announces a free customer communication and targeting tool. <sighs> How do we explain this, Christian? This is kind of cool. It's a cool tool. It gathers, gathers all the information from, you know, from, from your uh, chat tools, from uh, marketing workflows. It, uh, it's, there's a lot. I'm going to give some background here. I'm going to give some background. So basically, Shopify uh, at their annual conference, uh, probably about three years ago, they decided or they announced that they weren't trying to become uh, the best um, kind of CMS or content management system, but rather they their new focus, their vision, their goal, and their objective was to become the the Best, I wish I could remember the way that it was worded. I'm seriously butchering this, but it was something like becoming the best um, uh, e-commerce platform. Uh, so, so basically, not like not not just focusing on being able to build amazing websites with loads of functionalities, but rather being the machine behind connecting you with your customers through whatever channel that may be. So, if you're going to sell on, you, you might want to sell on Facebook. So, Shopify then built. Um, and in uh, 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 what's it called? Um, uh, uh, they bought. <laughs> God, I'm struggling today. <laughs> they built a, a system that allows you to very quickly and easily um, sell all of your products on a, on a Facebook sh- store. Um, so if you've got all your products on Shopify on a Shopify website, very quickly you can have them all on Facebook as well. And uh, the same goes with uh, all sorts of different platforms. So they really want to be the the even Google Shopping. Exactly. So they really yeah. want to be the engine behind helping you sell your products through different channels, not just a website uh, e-commerce store, right? They want to be the the e-commerce mm, vehicle for all different channels, all available channels. And they definitely simplify things with Google Shopping. I mean, you just tick a, f- a few buttons, uh, you connect your account, and it's just done. Yeah, it's exactly. It's that simple. I mean... <laughs> And so the cool thing is, here's their latest release for this kind of, um, the, the new, whatever I just explained thing. Um, <laughs> and they are now, they now have a chat app that's going to be available on iOS this summer. Uh, we, there's no news on whether, when it's going to be available on Android at the moment, but it is available on iOS, uh, as of this summer. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to bring all of your different chat apps or chat tools to one place and it's going to be on this app called ping shopify ping and it's a free app that 
basically allows you to so starting with what um they are beginning with a few they're beginning with facebook messenger rep.ai and chat kit um so they're going to bring all of your chats and communications together into one app so you don't have to be like checking so i think the kind of over the long term goal here is so that you don't have to be doing customer service on Twitter, on Facebook Messenger, on your Facebook page, on uh, your live chat on your website and all these different places. Because it's become kind of crazy these days, uh, just trying to manage customer service, all the different channels through which people can contact you. Uh, Twitter's become a massive channel and Facebook Messenger's become a massive channel and people expect to get a response when they reach out to you. So as a customer service or as a brand, in order to keep up with all this stuff, you've got to open like a million apps every day and you've got to try and keep up with all this stuff. It gets kind of, compli- kind of complicated. So I think Shopify is trying to solve this with their new app, Shopify Ping. It also comes with Kit um, built into it. <clears throat> now, Kit is something I think I've t- talked about on a few podcasts before. Kit's this really cool app that's been around for years for Shopify. Um, and it basically allows you... It's uh, We talked about it actually in the chatbot podcast yeah. which was i think it was the the take traction show and i think it was like episode f- six or something like that i'll put it in the show notes and kit allows you to it's not to communicate with the with your consumers with your customers but rather to help you manage the marketing of your store so kit will send you messages saying that you've nearly run out of stock on this or no you've uh you haven't been selling much of this product recently. Would you like us to uh, create a campaign on Facebook to promote this with a 10% discount? And you can just reply to the message from Pit, from Kit and say yes, and it will literally set up an entire campaign for you on Facebook and start marketing that product for you. Really amazing uh, bit of software. And it's going to come fully integrated with Shopify Ping. So you'll be able to communicate with your customers from Ping and also have kind of your marketing assess, uh, assistant within Ping as well. It's just going to be a really cool way to start using Messenger apps. And this is something we talked about as well. Was it was it chatbots or was it? Um, I think it was the chatbot I episode. Think it's Christian in the chatbot podcast. Yeah, well, we were talking about really how messenger apps are being implemented in China and how people to make a lot of their purchases through messenger apps and stuff like that and. It was a really interesting podcast because we talked about how the kind of Western world has been a bit slower in adopting these things and whether we will start making purchases through uh, through our messenger apps that are the most used apps on our phone. I think the um, uh, is it the is it Facebook Messenger or Facebook and Facebook Messenger are like ninety five percent of people's time spent in apps on their phone is spent in Facebook or something like that, um, like crazy numbers. Shit. So. And we've just had the release, if you listen to last week's Oppie News, episode two, we also talked about the release of Instagram now um, allowing, or not quite yet, I think they're about to release e-commerce payments straight directly through Instagram. So in-app payments, you don't have to leave and go to the uh, brand's website to make a purchase if you see an app. I think app, they already don't... launched uh, like a um, better version of um, uh, of the app uh, where you can buy tickets online tickets right. or book appointments stuff like that so the interesting thing here is that we're kind of moving away from website purchases right there are now so many freaking channels that you can buy through it's not it's not just about having a website it's about have you got ping so you can sell to customers i mean this is, this is through this isn't necessarily f- selling through ping i guess one day um you will be able to sell through ping. I don't know, but we're certainly moving in that direction where you can have this kind of wherever you can interact with a brand and advert for a brand or, or communication with a brand. Um, they're going to become new platforms where you can make purchases. So if you can interact with a brand on Instagram and you can see an advert for a brand, then you are going to be able to make a purchase directly with that brand on Instagram and potentially through Shopify ping as well. Um, I think it's really cool. It's really cool how we're getting these kind of these channels where we can communicate, connect and sell to our customers outside of our websites. It's like the website is kind of no longer the most important thing. Maybe it's still the most important thing, but it's not the only thing, right? So that's cool. 
yeah, multiple options, and it definitely simplifies um, the way uh, e-commerce owners communicate with uh, with their users or clients. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So it's going to be really cool if you're on Shopify, download Ping or keep checking in the iOS or the iTunes app store um, because that's going to be out this summer and it's going to be cool. So check it out. It's going to help you streamline your business. On to our next topic of today's Oppie News. Uh, Alibaba has acquired a company. Um, This is kind of interesting. Alibaba has acquired a company called what are they called Duraz which uh, yeah I think the company's uh, um, name is Rocket Internet uh, right yeah so Duraz was founded in 2012 by Rocket Internet and it operates in Pakistan as well as Bangladesh Myanmar Sri Lanka I never know how do you say that Myan, 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 Myanmar Myanmar. 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 We'll call it Myanmar for now. Sri Lanka and Nepal. Um, So this is kind of interesting because Alibaba is now trying to move into South Asia. Um, And it's not not their first purchase from uh, Rocket Internet. I think it's the second. Uh, The first being Lazada. In Southeast Asia two years ago. Right. Okay. I'm with you, Christian. (laughs) So what's kind of interesting about this, and we don't really know much. There's not much information on this at the moment. Um, But we do know that Amazon, if you listen to our first episode of Oppie News, that Amazon is making a big push in India at the moment. They're investing heavy amounts of money. They are... um, Opening fulfillment centers all over the place in India, and they are seeing massive growth which was not expected if you looked at the numbers a year ago back at the beginning of 2017 things were not looking good for amazon in india and now it's looking very good we've then seen walmart which we'll come on to in a moment as well walmart kind of seeing the potential of india and buying flipkart listen to last week's uh opinions yes. to find out more about that episode two um so they're trying to get into india as well to try and compete in, uh, against Amazon in India. And then we've got Alibaba coming in and acquiring, uh, acquiring a company in, uh, South Asia as well, um, in countries such as Pakistan and Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, where it is going to be tre- cheaper to, uh, produce, uh, or to manufacture goods. And I think all much- these companies go for the, um, the big numbers. All, all these, uh, locations, you know, come with, with, Population of 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 over one hundred ninety million, two hundred. Right, exactly. So I think it's for, more than that, but yeah, yeah, it's got to be a big point, right? It's got to be a big factor. So, this is interesting, right? The Asian market is going to explode in a good way. Right, it's just kind of inevitable from all this stuff that's going on over there. Um, we're seeing some seriously big advances, and. Um, you know, we're seeing Walmart and Amazon trying to push into India. We're seeing Alibaba acquire a company closer to India, um, or, or that has, um, what do you call it? Has uh, a footprint closer to India. So basically, but you, if you're selling through marketplaces in India, you're going to be able to source, uh, goods, products for much cheaper, or at least get them to India for much cheaper because they're going to be manufactured closer. And yeah, there's just going to, there's, there's so much that's going to happen there. So keep your eyes open. If you're, if you're into the whole kind of white labeling thing, then Asia is a seriously good place to be looking at investing your money right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you, it's always a good place to, it's always a good idea to invest your money where Alibaba, Walmart and Amazon, all three are investing their money. Um, Indeed. It's just like a no brainer. Get the hell over there. Go and make some fucking money from them. Indeed. And if you're selling with Amazon, for example, Amazon US, you know, it's crowded, right? But if you go to a, a country like India, now that's where you can make some serious money. Agreed. Very much so. Yeah. Um, it's crowded. 
on that note, I'm still amazed every single week by how crap Amazon is over here in Mexico. Um, it's just amazing. And, and the thing is, so I thought, so you've got Amazon over here. I'm sorry, I'm going on a tangent now. We'll come back to the news in just a moment. I won't take long, I promise. But um, I thought that people didn't really know about Amazon and people weren't buying stuff online in Mexico. People weren't used to it and people weren't comfortable with it. But you talk to most Mexicans and they know about Amazon and they use it. But then if you go and try and buy something on Amazon over here, there's nothing. You can't buy anything. It's crap. It's so what really, do you think the problem really is? shit. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know Mexico is behind on things. Importing to Mexico is a nightmare. I've tried to make two purchases since I've been living here from different countries. One purchase from Europe and one purchase from the US. Um, one was supplements from the US that got stopped at the border and they requested that I had some health uh, certificate from the Secretary of Health and blah, blah, blah. Impossible. Could not get it. Had to return the products. Or no, didn't even get to return the products. Just had to throw them away. And then I ordered some trainers some sneakers uh, some adidas sneakers from europe because you can't buy any decent sneakers around here it's impossible and uh, and even they got stopped at the border they wanted me to pay 40 dollars at customs to get my sneakers what? through the country it's like 50 percent of the value for- of the sneakers really yeah so that's so why that's that's the maybe that's reason, why I but i don't know but there's there's some serious potential over here in in Amazon uh, in Mexico. Anyway, tangent over. Let's get back to the news. Next item on today's uh, Oppie news Oppie. is Coinbase's first investment. This is kind of cool. Um, Coinbase has obviously seen some massive growth. Not only have they been growing a company, but they've been heavily invested in cryptocurrencies. And they, I don't even know what their valuation's at, but they're making a shitload of money, Coinbase. Um, they're the most popular platform for purchasing Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin. And Bitcoin Cash, but no one wants Bit- Bitcoin Cash. Um, <laughs> and, Is it that bad with Bitcoin Cash? Oh, man, I invested in Bitcoin Cash when it was like, it was at like $1,600, and now it's at like 500 <laughs> mm. Yeah. So you're on a loss with that one. I'm on a bit of a loss with that one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and oh, hold on, I've got a call coming in. It's so unprofessional. Um, so what have we got? Uh, Coinbase is has now made an investment into another company. It's their first investment into a company, and it's a company called Compound. And what Compound is trying to do is to let you borrow or lend cryptocurrency. So the problem we've got, right, if you um, – Let's say you've got a savings account at a bank, then you might be making, I mean, these days, interest rates are absolutely shocking, but you might be making 1%, 2% um, interest on your money, right? You might be making a little bit of interest. you're with a good bank. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's not a good comparison because in the last two years, we've seen the worst interest rates, I think, literally in the history of banking. Um, Yeah. We actually even saw negative interest rates. I'm think, I think it was Deutsche Bank was actually, actually had a negative interest rate. It was minus 1% or something like that, which is just ridiculous. They were actually taking money from your, your Taking account. money for you to have your money with them. Yeah. Like charging you money for you to have That's a savings ridiculous. account. Yeah. Um, but what Compound does, the problem with uh, cryptocurrency investments or savings, let's say you put some money in Bitcoin as a, as, a, as a kind of savings or wealth preservation vehicle. Well, right, you're, you're exposed to the vulnerability and, and the variability of the market. So you can, you can grow your investment and you can lose money as well, depending on uh, how Bitcoin is doing in the markets. But you can't make interest on it. You're not making interest as such. Um, so what Compound allows you to do is literally lend your money to other people who are trying to be clever and borrow and short cryptocurrencies and make money by being far more clever than I am. Um, and when you do that, you will receive an interest rate. Now, the interest is uh, variable. It depends. It's it's calculated by an algorithm that, that Compound's developed. Compound is the name of the company, by the way, that Compound has developed. Um, 
But the cool thing is here, you've, if you've got $1,000 in Bitcoin, you can not only make money from the growth of Bitcoin, but you can also make interest on it, which goes back into your Bitcoin to buy you more Bitcoin. And you're going to be making compound interest. You're going to be growing your wealth much quicker, much better. So super interesting. It's another kind of another, um, another side of cryptocurrencies that I don't think we'd really explored before. Um, I think we should give it a try. I'm, I'm really interested in how this will, will unfold in yeah. the, the months to come. But uh, Massively I, so. And the cool thing is, if we, we know that if Coinbase has made a, a large investment, I don't know, did, did they... I huh, can't talk. Did they reveal the amount? No. So Coinbase um, Compound has raised 8.2 million as their seed round, right? This is the first money they've raised. 8.2 million is a pretty big seed, I'd say. Um, I'm not sure how much Coinbase has invested, but we can be sure that if Coinbase is investing in a company, it's the first time they've ever, ever done it, they are probably going to be integrating uh, Compound into their system. There's going to be some cool partnership there where it's not just going to be an investment for them. They're actually going to see it as a... Um, an asset to support their existing business. So we're probably going to see some integration with Compound and Coinbase in the coming months, I would say. So look out for that. I think it's going to be really interesting. If you've got cryptocurrencies, you're probably on Coinbase already. So look out for the opportunity to start making interest on your cryptocurrencies. Probably, my guess is, sometime after this summer. Yeah. Let's see how it unfolds. Let's see how it unfolds. So, and you can go and check out more at compound.finance if you want to find out more about Compound. Um, yeah, you can go and see their website there. There's not much to see there, though, anyway. Um, next uh, thing that we want to touch on today is driverless cars. We've been waiting for it for years, and it looks like it's about to happen. Thanks to... Uh, tech company drive.ai. Uh, now drive.ai is not a car company. They are a company that develops systems technology to, that can be applied to all cars to have driverless, uh, handling or driverless navigation. Super interesting. What the hell? I mean, it's, it's I can, just so I can exciting. hardly wait the moment for the moment where you don't get to drive through idiots. <laughs> you don't have to hassle uh, with h- idiots. Um, you know, everyone would have a driverless car. Yeah, that's going to be cool. It's going to be very cool. And it's going to be coming. If you're in Texas right now, if you're in Frisco, I don't even know where Frisco is, but if you're in Frisco in Texas, then it could be happening sooner than you think. <laughs> this July, Drive.ai will be launching uh, an autonomous ride hailing What's this? An autonomous ride hailing pilot in Frisco, Texas. Um, uh, now the release, this will be in July. The launch in Texas will be with safety drivers, as they call them, which means that you will have to have someone behind the wheel. Um, now that person is not driving, but should anything go wrong, they can grab the wheel, they can stamp on the pedals and, uh, take back control of the car. Um, who knows how laws are going to unfold with this stuff and how driverless cars are actually going to be implemented into our modern society. Indeed. But it's going you to know, have Accidents to happen. might happen. Um, <laughs> there would be a lot of skepticals um, regarding the idea of driverless cars, but I think eventually it'll come to that. Yes, exactly. Well, it'll have to. I mean, there's, there's not really a choice. Um, yeah. No more road rage, no more accidents. Stupid accidents, for that matter. And the thing is, it's probably going to be pretty soon. I'm really excited about it. I think in the next five years, we're going to see a lot of driverless cars on the roads, and it's going to be kind of weird, but kind of cool. Indeed. All right. Next point of today's Oppie News. Uh, what have we got? Um, Which this is the last stuff one. on Drive. Oh, we got some stuff on Walmart. So this is what I was touching on before. Um, Walmart has released their first quarter report. Uh, we haven't gone through it and we're not going to spend a bunch of time going through that right now. But basically it seems that they've kind of, they're, they're losing a bit of money and things aren't going really well. Uh, the stock has dropped. Um, and, uh, I think yeah, they're things doing that, better that, than last year, but, uh, but they're not beating predictions, right? They're not be- beating really. the forecasts. 
which isn't great. Their first quarter earnings are... Well, no, I've got here, Christian, uh, the shares took a tumble with e-commerce, gro- e-commerce growth dropped to 24% from 50% for the previous period. And that's the previous period, not the previous year, so the previous quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you're comparing... So we're talking about the first quarter. You're, you're talking about the previous period being the Christmas and Thanksgiving quarter. Um which is always going to have some seriously high e-commerce numbers. So I don't think that's a massive, I don't think you should pay too much attention to that. Yeah. Um, what's interesting though, and we've already really been talking about this, but um, this is, this is cool because it's kind of from my, from where I'm from in the UK, there's a, there's a big supermarket. I mean, we got, we got probably like four or five major supermarkets. We've got Tesco's, Waitrose, um, Morrison's, Sainsbury's, Asda, and you could probably say Marks and Spencers. I think those are those are probably the biggest. And Asda has always been like this one f- that's been known for being really cheap, um, cheap products, just a really cheap supermarket. And not necessarily like the worst quality, but it's always just been known for being super cheap. And Walmart acquired uh, Asda, I don't know how long ago, but they have just, they, they've sold Asda to Sainsbury's, which is another supermarket. Sainsbury's have acquired Asda, so we're going to see massive growth from Sainsbury's. Um, well, we should expect to see massive growth from Sainsbury's. And that was just prior to Walmart acquiring Flipkart in uh, India. So Walmart's really, I, I guess they're really trying to take a pivot from being this high street brand that owns supermarkets and sells cheap products and on the high street to being much more e-commerce focused with and in different countries they're focusing on india so i'm not really sure walmart's making a big pivot i think they're making a seriously big pivot if they do it well then we could see some incredible growth from Walmart. It could be a great stock to be invested in right now. If they execute well on what they're doing, we might see some massive growth from Walmart in the coming years. However, they have decided to sell one of the biggest supermarket chains or brands in the UK in order to go after Amazon, the e-commerce giant. And there's a very high chance that they won't succeed. So there's a big risky one for you, um, but it could be a good opportunity to make a lot of money with Walmart um, in the coming years. Who knows? You decide. So I think that's it, Christian. Anything else you want to add on Walmart? That is it. Um, I think Walmart uh, will lose eventually at this game. I think Amazon is way ahead of, of anyone. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't but know. A, 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 a bit of competition is always beneficial for the consumer. So I do hope Walmart would, will succeed. And um... I, be, I believe in Walmart. I think Walmart <laughs> is a, a fantastic business. I've studied them in the past um, for the purposes of a client. Um, and it's a, it looks like a fantastic business. But... Um, I just think that it's just crazy going after Amazon. I mean, I know Walmart's massive. It is a massive company, uh, you know, but they're going after the, one of the biggest companies in the world and certainly the best e-commerce company in the world, I would say. Definitely. I mean, that's from my lack of knowledge of other companies in Asia markets and things like that. But I would say it's one of the biggest e-commerce companies in the world. So why are you going after that market? It's crazy. Um but we'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Perhaps they have got some. They, perhaps they've got some geniuses behind this who really know what they're doing. And uh, you know, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Yep. All right then, Christian. That's a wrap. That's everything for today's Oppy News. Anything else you want to say to the to the audience That's out all. there? That's all. Don't want to send any love messages or. Uh. Say hello to your family or something. I say, <laughs> I'd like to take this moment to uh, say hello to my family <laughs> and friends. I want to thank my mom. I want to thank <laughs> my, my <mom>. dad. <laughs> I want to thank my, no. my family. <laughs> um, I wish everyone a good, a great weekend. A great weekend. Yes. On this Friday, the 18th of exactly. May. Exactly. You see how, how I came back uh, from, well from my mistake. Well done. You, you've you've <laughs> redeemed yourself. I I have indeed. <laughs>
All right, then, everyone. Have a fantastic weekend. And uh, and that's all for now. That's all from this week's Oppie News. Enjoy yourselves. As always, I've been Charlie Centre. And I've been Christian Oprea. Dun, 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 <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was. <laughs>